what do you think about um, some of these theories that people have come up with for decentralized autonomous um, like rideshare programs? Um, you know, taxis are becoming obsolete as services like Uber and Lyft uh, get more popular. Um, so people are imagining like a decentralized way to achieve that where, you know, sometime down the future, this car can come pick you up and take you to wherever you need to go and it will charge your account automatically. And the craziest thing is there's no driver in the car. It's driverless. It's just a machine that's operating according to code and, you know, it can automatically find the fastest route to take or, you know, that uses the, the least gas or whatever. And, um, like, that's... If, if they code it right, this car can just, you know, operate on its own. This, this fleet of cars can all just, you know, collect money from people for driving them places. And, like, I don't... I don't know where the money would go. Obviously, it would go to pay for, you know, maintenance on the cars or the machines or whatever and paying for gas and fuel. But, um, you know, besides that, whoever designs that system and does it successfully uh, will probably make a lot of a lot of money off it. But the thing is, like, it just it decentralized organizations just eliminate the need for um, humans to do certain jobs. Uh, you don't need humans doing accounting. You don't need humans, you know, looking at laws and doing compliance and stuff. So that means that you're going to have more human resources to, to accomplish other things innovating the company. Um, you know, that's that's one possibility. Right. That would And that would be a really effective way to efficiently operate um, a monopoly. And not, mm. not in the negative sense of the term you know there's this, a lot of you know negative connotations around the word monopoly but there's some instances where certain industries such as public transportation um, they're they're just prone to monopoly because there's just a lack of physical space like, like there's there's literally not enough space for competition and um, you know on this thing I was reading about about DAX that's actually you know one of its biggest uh, virtues is that um, is that it can it can efficiently operate a natural monopoly. So like so things like, you know, public utilities can be done completely decentralized. Um, like public transportation, like you know like can you like can you imagine uh if there if there were like a hundred different uh taxi companies in a city like competing with each other? It's not it's not really possible because, you know, the roads can only fit so many cars. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. so, you know, yeah. so the, the, there will just tend to be, you know, like like one, one company providing public transportation. Yeah, but then also that that also gets caused partially by the by regulations. You know, the the main one or two taxi companies, you know, uh, get in talks with the legislators in the area, and you know, uh, fill out regulations that benefit them because they're like, we already do this stuff to you know for our business. So everyone else who wants to get in this industry should also try and do them. And, and you know, monopolies don't just happen because of a lack of space. It happens because of government assistance in a lot of cases. Well, yeah, the, the, ta the current taxi monopolies are, like, are totally created by government. Uh, but also, you know, if you notice, these, these, ta these taxi companies that, are, that have monopolies on major cities they're you know they're also lobbying to ban Lyft and Uber yeah yeah because because there's just there's not enough room for both of them and, and they feel and, like you know, Uber is cutting corners in terms of regulations that they hold themselves to yeah th and the reason the reason why uh these taxi companies are so uh reluctant to embrace this uh this peer to peer ride sharing uh, structure is that uh, they have so much invested in the old systems, you know, because uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that when something new comes along, you can't just immediately adopt it. You have to actually pay to get rid of everything you've already built, and then you have to pay again to replace it all with the new technology. Mm. And and that's and that's why old technologies operate, you know, like for for several years until the new thing takes over. Yeah, even when they're and, still when they're already obsolete, they keep going. Yeah, because it costs too much to replace it, uh, you know. So, so what's happening with the, you know the traditional taxi monopolies versus Uber and Lyft is that uh, 
is that they these tax companies probably can't profitably compete with them because in order to do that they would have to adopt that technology which would require them uh, to basically get rid of, a lot of their money taxes. To, they would have to spend a lot of money to overhaul their entire company. So so that's not that's not really a question of, you know, natural monopoly. Like once once Uber and Lyft uh, take over if they can survive all the government bans and stuff once they take over it'll probably remain uber and lyft you know just because they'll become so popular uh that they'll just fill up all the physical space and it'll be hard to compete with them until something else comes along that makes it even more cost cost efficient with that you know i can't i can't imagine that because uber is Uber and Lyft, you know, the drivers provide their own cars, you know, like there's really not that much overhead. Yeah. So when we're, so when we're talking about these DACs in, in terms of uh, like markets and, and, you know, the economy at large, it, it's really great for natural monopolies because it, it, makes, it makes them pretty much so costless that they can operate efficiently and then when something even more costless comes along, it, it's not that hard to break everything down and replace it. Mm. But in terms, but in areas where there's lots of competition, like food service industry, uh, clothes, books, stores, you know, any, everything or anything where there's lots of competition, technology, um, you know, the the it, the DAX could make them completely costless to a certain point but you would still need that entrepreneurial edge at the head of the company to compete with everyone else because there's not just one company there's a hundred companies 